Hi, I'm Alan, and I'm one of the instructors here at We Can Code It. Hi, I'm Kendra, and I'm the admissions representative for the Columbus campus at We Can Code It. Hi, I'm Lauren, and I'm the Student Success Program Manager. Hi, I'm Lacey Nichols, and I am the Career Services Student Success Coach here at We Can Code It. We're going to have you join us where we're going to teach you how to build web pages with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So with our new JavaScript bootcamp now being offered, we decided to build a fun little guessing game using JavaScript. That's right, L Lacey, we're going to get started here. We're going to create um, a few HTML elements in order to render some content in our browser. And for those of you that have been watching our video series, this should not be new to you. This is the same style that we've set up in those videos. Um, for the folks that are just joining us, CodePen is a great site and basically everything that we build is inside of the body of our document. So we can assume the body is there and we are starting with this div containing element and we'll build from there. So we'll just keep a little bit of a introduction here to the user um, on what this game is doing. So we have an H1 element to guess the number and then a paragraph of instructions. And again, all of these tags have an opening and a closing. You can see on line three there, I open the paragraph on the left of the statement and I close it with a forward slash on the right. Once we have that set up, we're gonna go into a div and this will be a div of input and we will place a text box and a couple of buttons in here that we can utilize to interact with other parts of our application. Notice input type of text gives us a text box while an input type of submit gives us a button. And as those are typing in there, as Lacey said, you can see them pop into the bottom of our screen there. Now the IDs we'll uh, talk about here in a little bit, they are going to be very important for our JavaScript. So pay very close attention there. Notice that on line 5 I have um, an input box that I will place an ID on later just to show you exactly how this works. But I went ahead on line 6 and 7 and I've put these IDs in. Line 6 being submit guess and line 7 being new game. So we'll talk a little bit more about those once we start utilizing them in our JavaScript. And we'll close off that div. And finally, we want to dynamically change the content of a paragraph here at the bottom of our document. And this will basically be the result of the guessing game. So it's going to give the user some feedback here. And we'll finally close this containing element off. And that's our simple structure for our HTML. Now that we have a basic structure there, um, we're just going to add some simple CSS to make the application stand out a little. So as always, you can pause these videos and you can check your code as you go and then you can restart the video. So you can code this in the comfort of your own home on your own time schedule. But we're just building out a container here and we will see this start to populate with a, um, a format for our document and we'll put a few edits on here. And I think I just have to go back here and I have a typo. Um, I need to place instead of the equal sign there I need a colon so it'll give us a background color. A little border radius just around those edges. But we basically got our application now centered on our screen and it looks a little bit better. So um, we are going to move on to the JavaScript. Um, this will handle our logic as well as our user interactions with the applications. That's right, Lacey. And the first thing we need to do is start off with some variables. And we are basically going to define these first and use them as references later. And we're going to start off with the, the secret number here. And the secret number will basically be a random function because we don't want to know what that value is. We want to try to guess it. Hence the reason we're playing a guessing game. 
Notice we are multiplying by our high number and adding our low number to this formula. So just like our instructions say there, Lacey, we are making that formula to guess the number between 1 and 10, as she just explained. All right, now our container is going to be a variable that grabs the element by ID of container, and our submit button is going to be a variable that grabs the element of submit guess. So you can see there those IDs are very important in our code. That submit guess comes over and that, that's what gives us access in our JavaScript to what's going on in our HTML document. We're going to do the same with new game and we're going to grab the ID for the new game button. And we'll finish off with result. So the result variable will allow us to dynamically change the feedback that we are giving to our user as we play this game. So now we will handle our first event, the submission of a guess um, by the user, which is the whole point of the game. So notice I am taking our button there and I'll add an event listener, and I'm actually going to, um, Lacey, for the viewers at home, purposely throw a few errors in here because I want to show you how to debug this code. Um, if you've done any programming before, you know that mistakes are going to happen, and I want to be able to show you how we can fix these issues that come up in our JavaScript. So our function here um, that we're creating is basically going to happen on click. So when we click that submit button, this function that we are creating starting at the end of line 7 and continuing on line 8 will start to get developed. Um, and now I'm going to go back and show you how to put the ID in here of guest field so that that text box has an ID and we can grab that um, right there. So what I've highlighted, that is the user guest variable. When the user types something into that text box, we need to grab the dot value of this so that we know what that number is. So um, we will give feedback to the user if the guess is too low or too high or if they won. And that's what we're going to do with our logic here inside of our JavaScript. So the first one we're going to handle is if the user wins. And so we can see our result variable dynamically change or our paragraph that has the ID of result on line 9 of your HTML. It's going to dynamically change with result.innerText. So if our user guess is equal to whatever that secret number is, we are going to display you win. Um, you can take a guess here about what happens if the user guess is greater than the secret number. Um, is it going to be blue? I think so. I think we'll make it, um, well, we'll copy that first, and then we can, we can change it. So we'll make this feedback, hey, this is too high, and maybe we'll change the color here, so we'll show a warning if they got it incorrect, so we can make those, those red. But either way, you can pick and choose at home what colors you would like to put in there. So if we don't win and it's not too high, it's obviously too low. So our final else statement there will show a warning that we are too low with our guess. So we're giving the user some hints as we go through the values. Okay, so let's try this out here, Lacey, and see what happens. And we don't get anything. So like I said, there are some issues in here. If you right click and inspect, you get the dev tools in your browser and we can go to the console and I just want to look at this very last error submit guest button is not defined so it's given us a little bit of feedback that we have an error in our code and um, it doesn't know what submit guest button is because it's just called the submit button so if we fix that now it grabs the proper variable for us and we um, can test again. Well, might be another issue. Secret is not defined. You can see that our dev tools are giving us some hints there. So um, let's take a look at 
that issue and that becomes secret number. So we just didn't have the right variables there. Now we get some feedback. Nice. So the game is becoming a little bit more playable for us. So now we need another event. Um, the new game feature of this application will be um, that will reset our application and make it a new random value for the secret number. Yeah, that's right, Lacey. So if we don't reset our game, it will be the same secret number every time. And so that's not very fun. Not at all. <laughs> and we also have a lot of other things happening on the screen, feedback that's given, and we need to make sure that that is also reset back to the beginning so that we can play the game again over and over again. So our result, let's just play, uh, let's, let's put some text, let's play again. So this way we can see some interactions here and we've got a few issues to test out. So something went wrong. Let's see. Uh, so it looks like you forgot a comma separating the click event from the function. Ah, oh, good catch, Lacey. Thank you for that. Notice that's on line 23 there. There we go. So you've got to get better at debugging this as you go, but it's a process. And it looks like our new function is working nicely. So I thought, well, since our background started off with this gray, we're going to reset the game to have the, that gray background again. Um, and then I also want to grab the text box, the guest field, and we need to change that back to being blank so that we can remove the number that we had placed inside of that, that text box. So we'll set the value equal to blank or an empty string. Finally, as Lacey said, we need to recreate our secret number so that it's a different random value from the initial, and we did that right there. Ooh, I went on first try, and look, we can play again. So it um, looks like my colors aren't working. So let's see what's happening there. Check our dev tools. Doesn't really give us any feedback on what that issue is. As you can see there, colors aren't working. Everything else is, so we're getting really close. Looks like my semicolon is inside of my color. So we'll place that on the outside there. This goes right back into the debugging, making sure that you go back through to see what, what issues you have. There we go. So now we're playing. All right, obviously it has to be seven. Try again, make sure we're getting different random values. And we're looking pretty good. So we're really excited about this JavaScript bootcamp that we have coming up, right, Lacey? Yes, it should be. It, it's going to be pretty awesome. I mean, it's some something that's similar, but it's also at the same time completely different than our current Java and CSS bootcamps. And as we go through this code here, and you can pause the video and check how your code looks compared with ours, yeah, it's it's this is just the very tip of the iceberg with what you can do with JavaScript. Um, most of you probably don't even realize the power that it has, but if you were interested in our boot camp, you will uh, learn one of the most in-demand languages right now. A lot of folks in Columbus are looking to hire JavaScript developers, so they, we are very excited. They really are. JavaScript as a full stack is something that um, is really sought after at this point. It's not something that we've necessarily seen um, a lot in the past, so it's really nice that we can get on the ball game. If you're interested in learning more about We Can Code It or how to be a full stack software developer, please visit our website at www.wecancoded.org, email us at admissions at wecancoded.org, or visit some of the links in our description. Thank you so much.